President Trump is using his powers to give clemency to nearly a dozen people, including high-profile white-collar criminals. Among them is disgraced former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich, who is out of prison this morning. He was set free when President Trump commuted his sentence last night. The president pardoned former junk bond king Michael Milken and former NFL owner Eddie DiBartolo Jr. They were all convicted of charges that included fraud, corruption, and lying. Paula Reed is at the White House with more on this story. So, Paula, what's the backstory here? Why did the president do it? Good morning, Gail. The president says he is relying on personal recommendations when deciding where to apply his vast pardon power. Now, the Justice Department has a formal vetting process for pardon petitions, and the president's unusual approach is raising concerns that in this administration, clemency is mostly going to those with connections. Everlasting gratitude to President Trump for, for doing what he did. The he former did Democratic did. governor of Illinois thanked the president and maintained his innocence. I followed the law every step of the way. I've said that all along. Rod Blagojevich was convicted in 2011 of trying to sell then-President Barack Obama's vacated Senate seat and was sentenced to 14 years in prison. He uh, served eight years in jail. There's a long time to go. Many people disagree with the sentence. The president's decision prompted swift backlash from the prosecutors on the case who said a justice system must hold public officials accountable for corruption. Blagojevich was a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice, but President Trump said what got his attention was Blagojevich's wife pleading his case on Fox News. The corruption in my husband's trial. Also seen on the network, former New York City Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick, who was convicted of tax fraud and lying to the government. Just Monday, Carrick argued New York should be tougher on criminals. We're going back to where we were in 1990s, early 1990s, 1980s. Exactly. And and, uh, and it shouldn't be. President Obama granted clemency to more than 1,900 people, more than any other president. But over 1,600 of them were nonviolent drug offenders, most of whom had received mandatory minimum sentences. NFL star Derek Brooks, who praised the pardon of former San Francisco 49ers owner Edward DeBartolo Jr., defended the president against allegations he's only pardoning those with connections. That's not about a status in society. That's a status about someone that has a willing heart uh, and a desire to give something back to someone else. President Trump will not say if he will grant a pardon to his longtime friend Roger Stone, who is scheduled to be sentenced tomorrow after being convicted of seven felonies. Tony. Well, Paula, on that subject, there have been reports that Attorney General Bill Barr has threatened to resign over the president's tweets regarding Stone. What can you tell us about that? Tony, CBS News has learned that the attorney general has told people he's considered quitting over the president's tweets. But President Trump has a long history of pressuring his own Justice Department on Twitter. He called former Attorney General Jeff Sessions unfair, beleaguered, and even disgraceful on Twitter. So Barr was on notice that these Twitter attacks are part of the job. And this really appears to be part of an effort to put distance between the Attorney General and the President amid these increasing concerns about political influence over the Justice Department. Last night, a Justice Department spokeswoman, though, said Barr has no plans to resign. Tony. For now, anyway, Paula, thank you very much.